All right, everybody, welcome to a special recorded episode of the Cleaner Cast. A little bonus footage for you here. We finally got Anthony Fisher on the Cleaner finally. Cast. He's been ducking and dodging us, but we finally ducking, got him on. Dodging, <laughs> diving. You know, yep. you know they say if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball, something like that, right? You can dodge the Cleaner Cast. Yes, yes. <laughs> very true. Kidding. But no, I'm glad you guys got me down. Yeah, a bunch of exciting stuff been, uh, been, has been released lately at the Rag Company. You've had Nano Diamonds, and then this yeah. week you've had all kind of polymers released in this new rinseless wash from PNS, the Absolute Rinseless Wash. So we're here to ask you the hard questions. Anthony, you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready, man. Bring, bring it on. I got myself a, <laughs> uh, a zero sugar squirt. I'm relaxing. It's Ooh. the end of the day. About to jump into a nice weekend. Uh, so I think you caught me at the right time for some harder questions now that mm-hmm. the dust has settled mm-hmm. from some of the other stuff. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Busy, busy week. So glad to have you here. So when did TRC kind of jump in the absolute development? Were y'all there from the ground, you know, the starting ground or uh, when did y'all jump in? We'll start yeah, that's there. a good question. So technically, if you want to get to like the the, the way, way, way back, um, this was roughly probably, I don't know, maybe three years ago. Uh, three or four years ago, we had been bugging Dave specifically and Bob specifically to venture into the rinseless world. Right? We wanted them to. We, we wanted them to say, "Hey, have you guys considered making a rinseless wash?" And to be honest, and they're completely honest as well, um, they weren't really familiar, super familiar with the concept of of doing rinseless. And they had mentioned how Rennie liked to do, um, you know, rinseless with pearl and things like that, and saying that you know he liked to use that, but there was never really like a direct, like, I don't, there was never really like a direct, like, okay, that's, that's what we want to do. What's the word, what's the word I'm looking for? Direct connection, I guess you could say. So uh, with Rinseless and the PNS team. And so uh, when we kind of started asking about it, because Jeff specifically, you know, the owner of the rag company, Mm -hmm. uh, he really wanted to see what they could do because we know that their chemistry is a lot different. And, uh, yeah. and Dave was really, he was honest. He's like, Hey man, I've never really made anything like that. Um, I can, I try, I can attempt to, and we can see what happens. Uh, but like, I can't promise you it'll be, you know, perfect. And so that was like years ago, like years mm-hmm. and years and years ago. And, yeah. um, we kind of picked it up. Then we had kind of set it down. We picked it up, set it down. And it was within this last, I don't know, year and a half, a little over a year and a half. Um, we knew that Dave was developing um, a rinseless wash and he didn't really go into too much detail in the first like several months. Like we had heard that through the grapevine and through Bob that Dave was working on something uh, and we were really excited for it, but he knew that we were very picky people. And so the way they honestly said it was, can you give us time until we have something that's like worth sharing? if that makes Mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Um, So they said that we want your involvement and we want your guys's input, but like, we just need to figure out what the heck this, you know, how this stuff actually works. And it was um, about a year ago, it was actually exactly a year ago, a little over a year ago um, when Dave and Levi went to, we were all at Monterey car week and Dave said, can you, show me how you currently use a rinseless from the car to see if my work so far has been going the right direction kind of thing. And, um, so they did a demonstration, they showed them and said, okay, well, this is pretty much in line with everything that I've been making. Right. So I think I'm on the right path and I think it's meeting some of these requirements. Uh, but he said that he still wasn't quite there yet. 100%. So, uh, he continued on and, um, it was about, gosh, I think it was one. I want to say it was either November or last October. We got the first, the first first sample that ever that ever existed, and um, and I believe that Sydney had had that same example for you know a little while before I did, and um, and she had been kind of using it, but then we got it and we started playing with it and testing it, and then we basically gave them our input, said hey. This part is, this part's kind of not, doesn't feel right, or this, mm-hmm. uh, the viscosity here doesn't feel right, or maybe the the way it settles doesn't feel right. So there's some certain things that we called out at the beginning. And then back yeah. in December, we got the next version. 
and the December version was getting closer, like much, much closer, um, but still wasn't perfect. And um, yeah, this kind of rolls into the next slide. Yeah. I got the TRC absolute, you know, key features that you started bringing to Dave once y'all got y'all's hands on it. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, because I mean, listen, if we're, if we're honest, I mean, like it, it, a rinseless wash. I mean, if you look at O and R as mm-hmm setting the standard of what your ex- your expectation of a restless yep. wash is right in all mm-hmm. honesty if you're using that as your baseline this is what a rinseless needs to do then that's that's what people are trained to do that's what yeah. people are trained yeah. to think and that's their expectation as well so you have to either meet or exceed those expectations you can't fall short in any one of those if it falls short there then why why would you even sell it or why would you make yeah. it there's no point exactly. Um, so our expectations was that it had to meet and or exceed, um, every single particular use that you would have with something like optimum, no rinse. And we explained to Dave really early on too, that there's other rinselesses out there. There's quite a few rinselesses out there. And oh, yeah. he, in all of his research was like, well, this company has a rinse list or this other big company has a rinse list or this other big company has a rinse list. He's like, so what? Are you know? Are they all just using the same stuff? And I said, no, Dave. Like there, like there are certain rinselesses out there that are truly soaps. There are other rinselesses out there that mm-hmm. are um, almost like a diluted APC, like it's just a det- detergent style uh, rinseless. Sure. And then there's a mm-hmm. few out there that are polymer based or organic polymer based, uh, or like a soy soy polymer based. Um, and then there are some out there that are in fact. Uh, quick detailers that are that are just heavily yeah. diluted and um, because a quick detailer to some people um, will have a lot of lubrication and it will yeah. have uh, slickness and it will have a lot of those things but it will not necessarily have the encapsulation that would happen outside of the natural ability of uh, carnauba, ma- carnauba wax mixed with water uh, mm-hmm. you know situation so um, anyway so we gave him the list of everything that it needed to do, all the requirements, everything that it needed to meet. And um, he he was mostly like, why does it need to be steamed? And I'm like, well, <laughs> it, I mean, like, I'm like, it doesn't have to be steamed. But I mean, in a steamer, it should still be able to work and be used in a steamer. And he said, yep. well, what's the purpose? And I said, well, it helps with potentially scaling within a steamer and it adds a little bit more cleaning power. And once he kind of understood mm-hmm. that, that's when he, I think made a few more changes to the, um, to the mix to meet those requirements as well. Um, so Good. then I want to say it was probably sometime in March or April, we got the next batch, but this next right. batch was actually like several batches. Like I got like mm-hmm. four or five different bottles and um, at that point, he was doing some like last few little changes, and I was really trying to be picky at this point. I was really <laughs> trying to like, hey, like I'm gonna pick apart anything that I can, like a customer yeah. would. Yeah, and, well, it's easy to go. It's good. Let's send it on. But yeah, it's something to really be great. Like I can tell, y'all really wanted Absolute to be just phenomenal. You got to start picking it to well, pieces. It, well, it. Ha- I mean, it has to be right. And mm-hmm. um, yeah. I don't know. And you guys already know my thoughts on some of the other rinselesses out there. Mm-hmm. And, and, and people will find things that work for them and they'll be happy with them. And yeah. I will say that there's products out there that I truly, I'm talking, I truly wanted to love. And I know that I'm going to try to love it when I commit to buying a large amount of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep, I wouldn't yeah. go out and buy a gallon of something unless I was like, Hey, I'm hoping I'm going to fall in love with this. Like everybody else has. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I did. And, uh, there was certain gallons of rinse list that I did really like, like I've, I've been honest and I've said that I enjoy using, uh, the Uber rinse list wash, mm-hmm. um, that, uh, not Wolfgang. Um, uh, I think it's just Uber, yeah, Uber rinse list wash that you can get from, uh, auto geek. And I've always really enjoyed using that. And then I've always obviously enjoyed using O and R. Uh, but there's a couple others, the uh, you know, that are big hitters in the game that I tried that I just I'm like I don't I don't get it. I don't I don't get why people like mm-hmm. it. And um, and I did some bucket testing. I, I you know things like that that would kind of show me some things. And uh, I don't know. I started kind of thinking out of the box on that stuff. So um, mm-hmm. 
back to those batches at that point in time, I think it was around March or I think it was around March where we were definitely getting closer, but I had like a few more, like really like, you know, like hard hitting questions for them. And mm-hmm. they said that, yeah, they've already started to address those particular things. And, um, and then it was back in, I want to say it was July, or it was either July or June, end of June, uh, end of June or early July, we got the final kind of batch of what this product should be. Right. Um, and it worked amazing. It did everything it needed to do. I wasn't particularly a fan of the smell that, that Dave had chosen at that time. And that and, rolls into my final slide, which is <laughs> the wars began. Gotta love yeah. the sense, eh? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. All right, continue. So um, at that point, yeah, I, 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 because I had already gotten several different scent versions at that point, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, I told them the big part of it is going to be the smell of the product because O and R has a great smell to it. Great There's smell, no denying yeah. that mm-hmm. it's got a great smell to it. It's a very unique smell. I believe they call it like a mulberry or, or whatever it is. And um, I said, if this is going to be something that people are going to be dunking their hands into you know, upwards of three to four hours a day in a shop or over the weekend, you know, a good hour or two over a weekend of doing washes. You got to love what you're smelling. You got to love what you're using. And yeah. so that's when it was like mid July, uh, Dave brought up six other samples. So at this point oh, wow. I had gone through, I had gone through, I don't know, six or seven different versions of the product that I gave feedback on. And then roughly 10 or 11 different scents Mm -hmm. within those mixtures. So there was a lot of, you know, kind of getting it dialed into what it needed to be. And um, and then what's funny is that, believe it or not, there was actually not going to be a uh, dye in the product. Mm -hmm. And the dye was not introduced until uh, about June. So at that point in time, all of the samples and all of the product ever since last year um, had been clear. So it was oh, wow. a, a pure. Cool. It was like a pure white color. It looked like mm-hmm. um, the purest white lotion mm-hmm. that you would see. Mm-hmm. It, there was no color. There was no tinge to it. It was just a pure, nice white. It honestly, yeah. it didn't look bad. Um, yeah. So. The blue color was added, but we needed to make sure that it wasn't so much blue that it would necessarily change the chemical makeup of the product because certain colors and dyes and fragrances have an impact on performance, Definitely. especially sure. once you get yeah. to a certain concentration. So that needed to kind of be adjusted. So the idea was a nice kind of um, light blue, I guess, kind mm-hmm. of creamy light Almost blue. Almost PRC blue. Kind of like lighter. a... Yeah, it's like a pastel, kind of like a pastel blue almost, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, just just to kind of complement the bottle. And um, yeah. and it was back in July when the, I want to say the final bottle, um, uh, the final labeling and all of that was uh, created. And they chose to go with the image of kind of like more of an ocean theme, beach mm-hmm. theme, uh, because uh, Bob Phillips and both Dave, Bob and Dave, uh, love uh, tropical areas mm-hmm. and um, so we had the tropical scent and then um, believe it or not I don't know if I'm supposed to say this but I did write um, I wrote the verbiage on the back of the bottle nice. so everything that you see there I wrote that up because that was really just the amount you know the work that we had put into it and mm-hmm. what the product does and so I felt like I had a good way to at least explain that you know um in the way that we've been testing it and using it um so yeah so after the scents and all that different stuff there's some crazy scents that we got um uh there was a cinnamon version i still have it on my desk uh there was a eucalyptus version there was a menthol-y version Mm -hmm. uh there was a uh, laundry version i got to use the eucalyptus and laundry when i went to hayward in june the scent wars was in full battle everybody had a different (laughs) scent they liked and they were just all like which one's anthony gonna freaking pick yeah the scent wars was a real deal once i got there but yeah the eucalyptus was pretty awesome but i think you nailed it the final coconut lime scent cherry on top well Mm -hmm. and dave had that kind of in his back pocket yeah where he had his hip pocket for a long time and he said he'd been trying to find a product that it would work with and then i kind of explained to him i said hey man like since 
our first coconut lime batch in December, mm-hmm. we tested this in warm buckets. We tested this in, you know, in hot water, cold water, all sorts of different environments and stuff. And I said that that smell in the winter time made me feel like it was summer and it made me feel like it made me feel good. And, yeah. and then in the summer, it makes me feel like I'm on an island, you know, washing my car on a beach. So I said it works in both scenarios. And uh, in comparison to like natural other lemon scents and other types of berry scents, I just thought that this made the most sense for the label. And it made the most sense for um, just kind of the vibe. You know, we mm-hmm. yeah, talk yeah, all the time about, you know, dipping your hands into a bucket of rinseless wash in a garage turn mm-hmm. it on music, grabbing yourself a drink, relaxing, getting into the, getting into the, you know, zenning out and washing mm-hmm. your vehicle. And I think that nothing really screams relaxation, kind of like coconut lime, right? Yeah. All right, Anthony, let's wrap this up with the absolute final thoughts. What are your final thoughts for the product that you may want, you know, the casual viewer to know about absolute rooms watch? Um, so final thoughts, um, absolute, is a fantastic product i mm-hmm. think it's something that took a long time to create especially from scratch yeah. um it's it is hard it is hard we, mm-hmm. we realized that that it's hard i didn't realize that there was gonna be so many different versions and i thought that it was a much simpler thing than what it was i knew that there was a lot of science right. into it but i think it really came down to there is a lot of organic chemistry involved and there's a mm-hmm. lot of um i mean it's just a lot of polymer technology and it's figuring out this stuff out what i do know is that the ingredients within rent within absolute um are the latest and greatest they're the newest ingredients mm-hmm. that you could probably buy here within the last you know year to two years especially during yeah. the pandemic uh, that's what i'm trying to every time someone asks me you know so better to know an r all i tell them is pretty much this is the newest technology yeah so if you want to stay up the, to date if you're not buying a bottle of absolute you're becoming you're behind on technology. If you want to yeah, try the new technology, buy a bottle. Yeah, it's a good way to look at it. It just it is in fact, I mean, it's kind of the latest in ingre- in ingredient technology. That's like that's mm-hmm. the best way to explain it. And that mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily make make something better immediately just by saying that. Right. But mm-hmm. I mean, I think that for the most part some some formulas haven't been touched for many many years i mean there's mm-hmm. several rinselesses out there that haven't been touched for many years and and that's probably because they do a good job doing what they need to do and that that's pretty much it but i think that going forward with this new baseline of ingredients and chemistry you know i think it opens up other doors down the road to maybe other different versions or other different sure. types of things um for this world that we live in now so um do I think that everybody needs to toss out their O&R and toss <laughs> out their soap and go and run to the store, run to the rag company to get a bottle of Absolute? I think that you need to – I think that you need to eventually try it. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I mm-hmm. think that it's um, – how do I explain this? I think that it's amazing and you need to try it. But Mm -hmm. you don't need to forget everything that you've learned and you don't need to, you know, grab the pitchforks and all that kind of stuff and and say that, you know, all this other stuff is bad. I don't want I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't want to I don't want there to be this giant war that's created over this stuff, because truth be told, I'm still going to use O&R. I'm still Mm going to use Absolute. I'm still going to use Uber rinseless wash because I still like that stuff. Um, It's the same way that I'll reach for a different quick detailer. Yep, all the time. Yep, yep. It's the exact same shit. And I just don't want people to fight over it because I, I'm already seeing a lot of conflict oh, in the dude. comments. And, and, it's just, and, I, and, I, and I'm like, <laughs> at the end of the day, we're just cleaning cars, guys. Like, it's yep. like, you know what I'm saying? It's not like exactly. we're not getting into like health things. We're not getting into like <laughs> other weird things like political things like it's Mm -hmm. just about cleaning cars and um we're just trying to give you another option out here that we've worked Mm -hmm. hard on and that that pns has worked hard on that i really think that people are gonna like but Mm -hmm. you know don't judge it before you haven't you know before you tried it and um so yeah i think that's how loved you know o and r in 914 (laughs) the last couple years people just really once they think they found you know the magic yeah. yeah. Sauce. So they they yeah. love their princeless wash of choice. They absolutely just bring out the pitchforks when you try and come for it. Mm-hmm. Well, and what people don't understand, who created the first 
videos on O and R ever right. on YouTube. It was us. We did. TRC. Yep. We did. Yep. And so like people are like, oh, oh, you know, and the thing and I love O and R. I've fought the damn O and R battle mm-hmm. for, for I don't know how long I've been fighting this battle mm-hmm. for. And yep. so which should show you how picky I am and, and what kind of standard I've, I've, I've held. And so we told PNS that their, their, their undertaking of this rinseless wash product was going to be a big undertaking. And they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're going to have a lot of pe- eyes on them. They're going to have a lot of people that are going to be skeptical because there's a lot of skeptics in the industry. Mm-hmm. But um, sure. I just want people to try it. I want people to develop their own opinion. And I think for the most part, I think most of the key points where I've said that the product does leave a slicker surface, the product does leave a nice streak free finish and that the product does have um, what I what I personally think is better water softening ability. Um, I think that people are going to be amazed by it. I think they're going to love it for exterior washes. I think that a lot of people might convert to absolute for exterior washes, Mm -hmm. washes specifically and Mm -hmm. or a clay lube or something of that nature. You'll find Um, a job for it that you specifically like it for. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And, yeah. And, and there, and there will be something. And like I said, there will be something for that because one thing I will tell you is that while I love O and R and I have used O and R for so long as a clay lubricant, mm-hmm. I've always felt that there was just that extra 10%, that extra 20% of slickness that I would have preferred yep. to yep. see out of O and R as a clay lubricant that have, would have truly made it like an ultimate product in that mm-hmm. particular area yeah. and has never hit that. Right. But what's amazing is that absolute does. Mm-hmm. So now I say, well, perfect. Now I have a gallon of clay lubricant. Uh, well, I've uh, 256 gallons of clay lubricant. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. I have, I have more, I have more clay lubricant than, I, than I'll ever know what to do with, but I also have an exterior wash product. I also have an interior cleaner and I have so many other things. And so, um, versatile. versatile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. People just, people just need to try it and Mm -hmm. people, and I promise you that you're going to like it. Um, and it's, it's going to be great. So, um, that's pretty much it. That's my final thoughts. I just, I guess the biggest thing I didn't want to create conflict with this thing. I don't want people to have to pick sides and do all this, but I literally just said what you just said pretty much on, like I I did a TikTok review and said what you said, you just got to try it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a sell. I'm a total sellout now. So, <laughs> well, I mean, and that's what, and that's what I mean. I'm like, I'm in the same boat now. Where people are gonna say, "Well, you're just trying to make money." I'm like, I'm like guys, I'm like, do you realize that it probably costs so much more money to buy these ingredients, and then probably uh, for PNS to pay Dave's salary for a mm-hmm. year and a half to create uh, mm-hmm. this particular product than it would to get the return back that fast? Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean. If we wanted to make money, we probably just wouldn't have taken this on or, yeah. you know, they wouldn't have taken this on um, and we wouldn't have allocated the time. And the- just made what everybody thinks. Some people might think it is, is O and R clone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Out, you know, but yeah. it's not that. So, um, all right, dude, yeah. you got any last minute statements? No, I just, I can't get over the, the amount of people knocking it already that hadn't even used it. Yeah, it's know? crazy. And it's, I, yeah, I, yeah. and that's, and that's going to happen. And mm-hmm. like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. I just, I, I've learned that, you know, it's, it's a pretty harsh industry in, in, in uh-huh. certain, in certain areas. Um, I'm glad that people, I'm glad that people at least accepted, um, like the diamond pro tech launch with open arms mm-hmm. or what yeah. seems like open arms, which is good. Mm-hmm. But when you get a company that's already so well known and is already, you know, yep. has it and is already doing such amazing things such mm-hmm. as PNS, when yeah. you launch a product like this, I understand there's going to be skeptics because the same people are the people that probably say uh, that bead maker lasts three days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the people <laughs> that say that dream maker is bead made maker. And then other people that say, yeah. Uh, you know, polarizing. I don't know why PNS has become such a polarizing brand to certain people, but man, they just, I don't know. I don't, I don't yeah, know. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry that they make fantastic yeah. products <laughs> in house that are very affordable for and have the, the nicest pros, people in the world, the enthusiasts yeah. and uh, the they products work down. every time. I'm like, that's just gotta be so crappy for yeah. you guys buying the products that you're getting the stuff that works. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm yeah. sorry. I don't know what else to tell you. Exactly. So, um, 
Yeah. All right, Anthony, That's we're going to get you out of here. We've gone 25 minutes, 15 minutes too long. No, you're <laughs> yeah. fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're we fine. may just stay all the way to the, to the bail. But uh, we got to no, get you're, no, you're, no, you're good, man. And so, well, Let's anyways, um, plug, have fun man. if people have questions. Like I said, always reach out to us. I mean, reach out to you guys as well. You guys are mm-hmm. great um, advocates for, you know, everything detailing. I think that um, you guys are great sources of information as well, and you guys do a great job doing this. And so um, we'll have to do it again. And mm-hmm. like I said, I'm mm-hmm. down to dive into the weeds. <laughs> whenever you want, whenever you want to, I have, yeah. I have mm-hmm. fun. I have fun with this yeah. kind of stuff. Um, exactly. And uh, yeah. So anyways, have a fun rest of your guys uh, uh cleaner cast and, uh, and hopefully we'll start seeing some more reviews on the product soon. Definitely. Hope All so. right. Follow them at the rag company and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Hope you enjoyed this bonus episode. See you later, Anthony. All right. See you guys. Yeah.